Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Worshipful Wednesday. It is that time right near the middle of the week that we pause. We tell God, thank you for the wonderful ways in which he has blessed us and how he keeps doing wonderful and marvelous things in our lives. I hope you've taken a moment today to stop and say, God, I thank you for the wonderful ways you've blessed me and how you've allowed me to be in the land of the living that I may declare the glory of the Lord everywhere I go to tell people how awesome and how great our guy is. We invite you to please look uh, at Luke's gospel, the 19th chapter, verses 45 through 48 from the New Living Translation, a message I've entitled, Jesus Clears the Temple, Jesus Clears the Temple. A text finds itself that Jesus has entered into the temple and he begins to drive out the people who are selling animals for sacrifices. This is during that period of time where uh, those who uh, came to uh, praise and to worship God, they were supposed to offer sacrifices. And uh, it was a moment in which people traveled from far and near. And whenever you offered a sacrifice, it had to be one that was pure and that was without blemish. So it became a common custom and practice that as persons came and as persons were there from far and near, uh, they would um, have different animals that were available to be purchased for the sacrifice. Well, th this was a wonderful idea, but someone decided to capitalize on it. Our text on today finds itself whereby Jesus is seeing what's going on. He knows that all the people, according to their uh, ritualistic practice and tradition, they were supposed to offer sacrifices for their sins. This was a way in which we were asking God to please um, accept my sacrifice. It's the best that I have to offer. Now, what happens is that people were now being charged um, more of a premium um, for items than they should have been paying. Uh, this became something that really infuriates Jesus because, in essence, there was a system that was created to take advantage of people, uh, to make sure that uh, not only people had their sacrifices, but this was a moment in which people began to exercise uh, their own ways in which they could get more and more money for themselves. They were charging inflated prices. They were charging people basically a convenience fee. Since you're getting it so close to the temple and since you're needing it for the sacrifice, we're going to charge you higher than we've ever charged you before. Well, the people began to pay this price because uh, they had no other option. First of all, their minds were, I want to give God the best that I have. My brothers and sisters, it's always wonderful for us to give God the best that we have and to make sure that we reach and give them uh, God's very best and that we give them the best of our, that we give God the best that we can give for ourselves. But this becomes a challenge because now they're charging people and taking advantage of people. Here we begin to see how Jesus clearly makes it known that no one should ever be taken advantage of because they're in a unique situation. In our world, in our day, we must identify with Jesus and how he said to those who were the religious leaders and those who began to uh, tax and charge higher premiums for uh, doing uh, that which was a necessity. And so Jesus runs them out the temple. He clears them out the temple because he wants them to know that this place should be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a, a den of thieves. Too oftentimes we uh, might find ourselves in our contemporary world as opposed to allowing God's house to be the place in which we come to worship and to praise and to glorify him. We use it as a way in which we might be able to take advantage of people and to give them a convenience charge. The convenience of being able to sit here, the convenience of being able to be in this worship service, the convenience of, of having persons around us who are notable. We must ask ourselves the question, um, do we sometimes do what is done here? Taking advantage of people simply because of their situation. Jesus lets them know that he declares this is what the scripture says. My temple will be called a house of prayer. It lets us see that God wants us to spend our time praying in the temple, not so much selling in the temple. We should spend our time glorifying God and giving him the best that we have and not taking advantage of people. My brothers and my sisters, we must uh, look at this even from a big, bigger perspective. 
how sometimes uh, the systems of this world take advantage of the poor, take advantage and give people opportunities so that they can inflate the price for a convenience fee. We must always speak out to the ill, the injustices of our day. We must make sure that we are able to call it exactly what it is, that which does not glorify God. And so Jesus lets them know that my father's house shall be called the house of prayer. And it is from that moment Jesus started teaching daily in the temple. And we know that he made those who were part of this tradition and this custom man, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law, they were looking for a moment that they could kill him because he was messing with their good thing. Our brothers and sisters, anytime we seek to do what God would have us to do, there's a price to be paid. And sometimes it means our very life. But those of us who have truly committed to Christ, our lives are already hidden with Christ and God. And that means that whenever we give our best to God, God always gives his best back to us. My brothers and my sisters, always know you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And God has a great blessing in store for you in this year of 2022. I'll look forward to talking to you again on tomorrow. God bless you. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.